What's up, everyone? Welcome back, subscribers. This is Eric, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts, and I hope you subscribe and follow along for future videos like this. Today, we're talking about a Yaesu FTM100D digital and analog C4FM transceiver. Now, gigaparts.com was nice enough to allow me to borrow one of these to check it out because I've seen this radio in the field. I've read about it, but I've never played with it. So I have a friend that brought it to a field day event, and he was showing people when it just came out, and I didn't get around to playing with it. So I figured I'll check it out, make a video on it, and maybe you can get a little insight from this video and see if maybe this is something that interests you, or maybe you can learn a little bit about it if you just bought it. So, Gigaparts, thank you very much for letting me take a look at this device here. And at the time of this video, the price of this radio is $309, free shipping from Gigaparts. And I don't normally say prices in videos because sometimes they change. You may be watching this three months later and the price may be different. But I encourage you to go to the website and check out the price in case they have a manufacturer's rebate or a special on the radio. Maybe you'll save even more. So the FTM100D. I like Fusion. I like System Fusion. I like all the digital modes, really. But System Fusion, I think, still has a lot of cool features that others may not have. That's what makes it unique. So what we're going to do is we're going to check this out real quick. We can skip the unboxing video because you know it comes with the radio, the fused power cord, the instruction manual, the mobile mounting bracket, and the backlit DTMF microphone. So we'll go right into the radio and turn it on. And the first thing I notice when I turn this radio on is the cool blue backlit LED backlit dot matrix display. Now the camera may be shining that off a little bit, but it's a nice, like almost like a whitish blue. So you can see this really good in nighttime and daytime conditions. Dot matrix display, and it's got enough stuff on the screen to keep you informed, and we'll show you as I go through and connect to wires X and make a contact without being too clustered. So I'll start with the front of the radio. You got your selector over here, you have your volume here, power, and the rest of the buttons. Really, what I like about having a radio with buttons on the front is if I can access a lot of the main functions from the front of the radio. So with that, what I can do is I'll explain the front and we'll go into it. On the left side here is your GPS information. Now, this radio has GPS built in, and I had it on a few minutes ago until I messed up my video and started over. So the GPS is already locked, indicated by the solid GPS symbol up here. But at a cold start, inside my blockhouse, it takes about 45 seconds for this thing to establish a lock on satellites. That's pretty quick for me, considering my, my FT1DR Yesu handheld I had took a couple minutes on a cold start in my house. Wasn't really an issue, but this thing locks pretty quick on GPS. Once it's locked, you'll see on the left here, you have a display of your information or your GPS as far as your direction of your heading and your speed. If you wanted more about the GPS, the bottom right button here, the display button, which acts also in certain menus like an enter button or a setup button. Tapping that button will take you into the second, which would show you the person you're talking to and their location from you, your heading from you, and how many miles away. And pushing it again will give you the statistics on your latitude and longitude, your satellites that you're locked into. So you can see which satellites you are established to link with. Okay. Now on the right, you'll see VFOA, VFOB. Your mode select over here, notice the FM is blinking. That's your automatic mode select. Right now it's listening for all modes, whether it be digital narrow, digital wide, voice wide, FM. VFOA, VFOB. Easy enough to switch with the button on the left side. VFOB, VFOA. Okay? And you could also do a couple functions from the DTMF microphone with the programmable buttons on the front. So, what do I want to do? I want to get on Wires X. Well, let's go into the menu first and see some of the settings before I get on the Wires X, before I jump ahead of myself. Now on the bottom right, go back to that button, but hold it this time. You're going to go into the menu. And in the setup menu, 
you'll see uh, some of the main functions that you're familiar with. Well, first we'll go to the display here, and you can set up your display, um, you know, what you want it to display, the LCD brightness, contrast, GPS information, and such. Hit the back button. We'll go to signaling, which is what Yesu calls their uh, signaling for your squelch type, your tone squelch frequencies for repeaters and such. So that's all in here. Hit back. And we'll go into group monitor. Group monitor is another function of Yesu System Fusion that allows you to display which Fusion users locally are near you uh, within radio range of a Fusion machine. So that way you can see by GPS with the group monitor. And there's a whole separate manual from Yesu on the group monitor on this and other radios. So you can see you know, uh, the range ringer, when someone comes into range on digital um, on group monitor, it'll show you, hey, K4CPJ is in range. So all that stuff's in there. And some other stuff like APRS. Now, APRS is something that I'm, I'm so glad that few, uh, Yesu keeps putting APRS in their radios. Because I have several videos on, Ye on APRS in my channel. You can check those out. But it's so useful in so many different things. And APRS is not designed for you to watch which direction someone's going. It is a tactical exchange of information that can be very useful to text to phones, to send emails. Check out my video on APRS. Check out other videos on YouTube about APRS. And I'm glad it's still built into this radio. So SD card, this unit does take a micro SD card. I'll show you in a, at the end of the video behind this display for saving images and audio files and news files from Fusion repeaters. Download them to the radio. Now you cannot display the picture or the image that you download on this screen, but you can take the SD card out and put it in a computer or perhaps another radio like an FTM 400 or an FT2DR where you can display the pictures. But the SD card option does exist as well as probably for upgrading uh, firmware through the SD. So the menu is pretty simple to go through. You know, each title has its own, uh, each, each menu has its own title. You can go and find what you need. So far, to me, seems pretty easy. If I want to mess with scan functions, of course, I would go to scan, and I can set up my scan functions. So how easy is it with this radio to get on wires X through a repeater? Very simple. You want to get into a repeater, of course, that's a fusion repeater. I'll go to the one south of me in Vero Beach. Make sure you're in digital mode. Right now it's on digital narrow and the button down here that says DX you're going to hold that button for a second and it's going to send a request to the repeater to access wires X notice the LEDs over here they change different colors for different meanings for when you're on digital when you're on uh, receiving analog or whatever so right there I'm on the AB4AZ repeater in Vero Beach and I'm connected to the I think that's Minnesota Wisconsin fusion network Let's say you want to be on America Link. Well, you can hold the band button, and it comes up with this menu. I can search all, hit the bottom right button here, and it's going to show me a list of all the nodes that I can connect to. Okay. So here's the list here. You can see the current connected nodes or repeaters or users to that link. So America Link has 88 people in it. We have Italy, CQ, UK. But I'll stay on the Minnesota, Wisconsin Fusion. So we'll just hit back. And I'll throw a call out there. KJ4YZI in Florida. KJ4YZI, WU0, WU again, Eric. How's it going there? Oh, fine business, Mike. I am uh, playing with an FTM100D um, through a Wires X repeater south of me about 10 miles on RF. And it looks like I'm about uh, close to 1,400 miles away from you. But I can guarantee it's a lot colder where you are than it is here. Go ahead. We're 
having a January thaw, temperature about 42. So we are doing very well for January, especially since we were through a lot of cold as you were there. Not quite as badly as we had it, but so uh, it's a great day in Minnesota. Can't beat it. Uh, I've never connected to this room before or talked to anybody here, so uh, I guessed it was the Minnesota-Wisconsin fusion, if that's how it was read on my screen, if I was close. Uh, but the name is Eric, and uh, like I said, we're in Vero Beach, Florida, about uh, 60 miles or so south of Cape Canaveral, about a mile and a half from the beach. And um, I'll turn it back to you. Currently right now on my Davis weather station, 61 degrees. Last night it was 41. The night before that it was 32 with a wind chill of 25. Probably nothing compared to what you deal with. Over. I only have that about halfway up on volume. But it does have a nice sound and speaker on here for sure. Uh, if you're in a mobile environment, definitely. Uh, we had some, uh, some nights here where we were doing about 15 below. And uh, some of our uh, fellow uh, Fusion system users uh, north to it were dealing with 20 below and worse. And that's real temperature, not wind chill. So uh, there were some pretty tough nights, and actually some highs during the were got above zero. Those get to be long days, but we are enjoying our uh, January thaw right now. And uh, yeah, but this room is uh, quite active. Um, it's one of two that I'm active on regularly. Uh, there is a, a Fusion technical net that meets here every Monday night at 7.30 Central tonight. And it's very helpful. A lot of nodes connect for that. I found that very beneficial. It's, uh, it's a lot of good technical resources here in this group. And uh, a lot of users in the Midwest just Minnesota, Wisconsin. So uh, that's kind of a scoop here. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, enjoy your helpful uh, videos, stuff, Nick. I've benefited from those. Sometimes you get data loss like that, depending on where the internet's coming from. Well, very good, Mike. I dropped you there, but uh, it might be the internet at the repeater site. Who knows? Maybe the gateway in between. But thank you very much for coming back to me uh, while I was on video here. And uh, I'll check the rest of this radio out, and maybe we'll do it again. I'll contact you on this repeater again. And uh, we will run into each other again. I'd love to uh, get into something other than the America link that's got some activity. 7-3, Mike. Good talking to you. KJ4YZI, Vero Beach, Florida. Really a good-sounding radio. If I was going through a hot spot, you know, it would be probably... Okay, Eric, very good. Look forward to catching you again. Yeah, I'm not sure where lapses are coming from. Normally, things streaming through this uh, through this network are very smooth and uh, very few interruptions. So maybe something down in that end. Seventy three. Look forward to catching you again. WQ zero A. So sometimes you have some some internet, you know, issues in between. You get a little packet loss like that, or maybe not packet loss, just drops. But anyways, um, I've never talked to anybody really except him through that uh, Fusion link, so I'll have to check that out again because definitely, um, you know, cool cool that I can get into something other than the America link. If you're not familiar with Fusion, a lot of people go to the America link, but I like to have somewhere else to talk where there's just a couple of guys or a bunch of guys that want to just shoot the breeze. So just like that, you're back on to the old analog repeater that everybody seems to have abandoned. But there's always somebody out there on analog. Look at that. That's Bob on there. I haven't talked to I haven't talked to Bob in a while. Squelch. Looking real quick on gigaparts.com, I'll show you the accessories available that they have. Just because I have a couple subscribers that I've been talking with that are visually impaired. They're blind, and they want to enjoy the hobby too. And I promise them, as long as I can remember, I will show if there is an available voice guide unit that can be purchased optional for certain radios. 
because they rely on that and they always ask, Eric, can you please show if there's an available voice guide unit to help us as blind hams use the radio and enjoy the hobby? So yes, there is a voice guide unit so you can hear the current frequency of the main band, record an incoming signal, so you can record it on there as well. And, you know, it tells you APRS messages and more on this thing. Uh, with, with this displayed, it will read out that for the visually impaired. That's a board that goes inside the radio. Also, there is a Yesu Bluetooth unit to allow hands-free operation of the unit. And that allows you for PTT and Vox while you're driving. Because, you know, in certain states, people get crazy when they get pulled over and they get a ticket for having a microphone in their hand, which I guess still is can be considered like texting and driving. So a Bluetooth unit, you could have an earpiece in your ear or a headset on or a Bluetooth PTT button on your finger, and you can enjoy it with keeping your eyes on the road because I want every ham to get home safely and not be fooling with their radio when they're driving. So the face, little tab over here, you can... Detach the face like this. Okay, here's where your mic plugs in. In here. So you can take that out of there like that. And you can use the extension cord to mount this, you know, farther away from the unit. And the mount for the dashboard would screw in. This would screw into that. So you can have a remote, remote uh, mic here or remote head. Now here's where the SD card goes in the front. Micro SD card, probably want to settle with a 32 gig, and you can save a lot of stuff onto a card that size uh, because the files aren't that big. So you can save a lot of audio recordings and pictures and stuff from different uh, repeaters or networks and um, save those. On the back, let's take this out here. On the back, so of course your SO238, uh, 239. Fan on the back with a heat sink. A nice size, a nice weight chassis. This is a little heavy. Um, not uncomfortably heavy, but it's definitely built solid. Um, a very heavy-duty radio and great for heat dissipation. And over here is where you would plug the data in. Now, that's for, you know, you have a PC connection cable for that as well as uh, for the HRI 200. We'll plug into this back here. And this is the type of plug it uses. Standard two blade, I forget what you call that, a T connector, or T, T plug. But overall, what do I think about it? FTM 100, I, I like it. It's, it's a simple to use, a very good sounding Yaesu radio for Fusion. I'm very impressed with the build quality. Um, really not a review, but just what I like about it and showing you what it does and what it sounds like. Um, you know, check out the FTM 100D, but I'm also going to check out the FTM 400 in the next video because that one's a little bit more advanced. And I'll show you about receiving pictures on that one and send it pictures from a handheld to the 400. So we'll see how the 400 differs in comparison to this one. Maybe you want all the robust features. Maybe you just want to be able to get on Wires X or just use it as a dual band with the System Fusion option if it ever comes up in your area. Maybe you don't have Fusion in your area. You could use a hotspot with it. Uh, not a HRI 200. I'm talking about a hotspot. Something like a NanoSpot. If you want to use this for C4 FM, you can transmit right into this at your home QTH and go through the internet anywhere in the world that you want. So I hope this video brought a little insight to you. I hope it's uh, informative but in a little bit of a different format where I just kind of went through it and wing it. And uh, all in one take, no scripts, didn't even open the manual. So great radio, I think. Check out Gigaparts. Thank you again for letting me borrow this unit. And more videos on the way, so stay tuned. Subscribe and 7.3 from KJ4YZI.